Welcome to the home of our stars where we have those in-depth sport-like conversations getting to know uh, you know the ones on our screens who are entertaining us but 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 wait for these stars to look a certain way to come out just with the bazaars, with the thing that makes them the stars. Somebody is weaving and doing all sorts of great things, which is why we want to actually get into the entire process and get to know the people behind the scenes. The people behind the stars. The people, if, if they don't press a button, you have no stars. <laughs> now this one is a face and a name that we know, but he's going to correct me because he says nobody gets his name right. Solomon. Kaziboni. Really? Yeah. So this whole time we've been butchering your name. I mean, I, I've tried time and time again to actually get people to pronounce it right, but I'm tired. So. Taziboni. Yeah. Wow. So Taziboni is our thing. Yeah, it's your thing. <laughs> but it's cool. <laughs> you just let it go, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that hails from? Um, Koboko. I'm actually Kakwa from West Nile. Whoa, we did not see that <laughs> coming. <laughs> <laughs> right. So your title would be Stylist. Yeah, stylist. Yeah. Costume designer. Costume designer, stylist, uh, upcoming fashion designer. Uh -huh. yes. yeah, just add that to the list. Uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it, we've added it. Yeah. So I um so you've been on TV, you've been talking about fashion and style and you've been hated. I don't know, I think it's just a human thing where you just don't want to be told you're not looking nice even when you made little effort I you know, know how it is right you can tell the person didn't care how they turned up but they still care that you've said it you know my years on tv were very very interesting mm -hmm. because it actually also taught me to you know grow a thick skin mm. you know you had to be able to actually say something with so much conviction yeah and go out there and still stand your ground in any case you're confident and say find me Hey, <laughs> the field is free. No, Jango. Jango. <laughs> so we're going back to the beginning. Yeah. Is, is, is it that Solomon just loved style, just loved how things were put together? Is, um, what happened? No, I've always, uh, growing up, I think I've always had a very, um, I've, be, I've always been art driven. Okay. Though even like the course that I ended up pursuing in, in, in campus was completely different. I, okay. I did microfinance eh? in, in, in Chambog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a microfinance graduate. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, art has always been my first love. Yeah. And actually, me making that decision to take the microfinance course was purely based off of pressure from mm. my parents. Mm. They were like, I initially wanted to do art and industry. Were design. they seeing that you were interested in art and you liked um, that? Then I don't think they really understood what I was doing because right. in HSC, in O and L, I actually pursued art and I really, really performed well in it okay. both times. But you know, me wanting to actually do art and industrial design, there was always that. You know, mm. it's, it's, I don't think it makes sense. You know how they ask you, what does context. a person who studies do? Yeah. Yeah. So, I was there. Yeah. 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 So that's how I ended up doing microfinance. Micro yeah. But while you were doing it, I bet you didn't let go of the other dream. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's mediocre because for me, it's like, let me just get this course Whoa. done mm -hmm. and then give these people their papers. And, and then go. Because they change it. So where did you start Mugobe Vidala? Uh, Mugobe Vidala uh, uh, was at Sylvia Worries. There was uh, an an opening for interns yeah and uh you know i naturally went there mm -hmm. and i'm like you know i would be interested in you know you know being a part of your uh, design house mm -hmm. and then we were actually supposed to make a couple of sketches because mm -hmm. at the time there was a collection she was trying to work on, right right and she needed fresh minds mm -hmm. so that's where uh, i come in and i did a couple of sketches i was very skeptical by the way even when i submitted them in but then I was called, mm -hmm. and then um, yeah, I was taken on. I started interning mm -hmm. um, in the workshop. So when you sketch, they make the outfit and yeah. Every um, I think the, the the story behind every collection is that it first starts from the concept, right, right. And then when when you uh, actually when you when you have the concept is is then when you do your research and then you know put it into you kind of visualize it and yeah. visualizing is actually like now making the actual sketches yeah and then after 
Uh, the designer then super basically just goes through them and uh, if she okays them, production begins. But also as interns, we're also tasked with supervising this production because they are your sketches, so you should be able to make sure they come out the way you envision them. Right. Yeah. You were in the real hustle. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you were next like to that. Completely eh? zero uh, professional mm. backing. Wow. Yeah, mine was purely just art. My love for mm. art and stuff. Right. So that sounds like it's the last thing you told me put upcoming fashion designer, which is that, yeah. what you were being. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, okay, why didn't that come much, much earlier? I think at the time, you know, her workshop was right next to the boutique. Mm. And then sometimes clients would come in and they would buy stuff. Yes. And then maybe they would have trouble with like, okay, if I bought this dress, then it's enough, and there was always everything in there. So. A couple of times I'd always, you know, like just be lounging around in the boutique and they would be like, you know, the, the sales girls would be like, Tasoko Jotu Yambi, you a suit. Then I would help and with time is when I realized I could actually be good at this. Wow. It doesn't involve supervision. I don't have <laughs> reports to submit Explain at the end of the month. Explain why you chose that shoe. Yeah. So that's where I started and I'm like, I could right. actually make money off of this. Mm. Pola and Pola, my very first gig, my very first telling gig then was um, Oriflem. They were shooting a campaign oh. and they had uh, enlisted uh, Juliana as a brand ambassador. Yes, I remember that. So at the time, my boss was uh, basically, she, mm. so project, mm. you know. Deal with that. Deal with that. Were you worried? <laughs> Every time they would, someone would come and they basically you just want to, you know, consult on something minor, yeah. you'd be like, Haka to Banzi Zagwash. Hey, I tell me I'm I know. <laughs> but then it kind of like, um, oh, why it just woke me up. Mm. Like, yeah. Did it make you more thirsty for this thing? Uh, yeah, definitely did. I'm going to definitely do it. Definitely did. Okay, and you nailed it. So that, that uh, so, so that was the eye-opener for uh, you. I'm wondering what was the thing because I, I got to know you from TV but then <laughs> I'm wondering okay so what brought Tazibo on the market? What made Solomon Solomon? I mean uh, how did we just one day magically <laughs> know your no, name? The thing is it's, it's always been like a journey mm -hmm. and Sylvia has been a very very uh, profound yeah. like um, person like in, in, in where I am today wow. as a creative because she's the one that opened most of these doors for me. Wow. Um, right when I started with her, it was primarily just to be in, in the workshop mm -hmm. design. Mm -hmm. But then with time there was an opening like at African Woman because if you remember I was African about to Woman, ask you, did you then, not, you know, put together uh, some of the style pieces, no, top no, no. pieces? By the time, by the time I, I uh, I joined Sylvia, mm. then it had gone on break. They were not, ah, in, public yes, they were not yeah. in publication. And then they rebranded, it mm. did rebrand, but as an online magazine. Yeah. So then is when I was offered the opportunity to actually head the uh, editing team, ah. like the fashion editor. And then also after that, shortly after that, is when she was approached by um, NTV to mm. host like a style the, the show. Style show yeah. And then they needed a panelist. Because uh, it just actually panelists. be actually needed two panelists in the show in three. the shop, yeah, yeah, three panelists, and me having worked with her mm. by the time we had built a very um, she trusted you, eh? yeah, we had built a rapport. Mm. So she's like, I mean, you could come on board and to la benga which again, I'm gonna have a try to but of course, yeah. I think then mm. we only had faith in the <laughs> expertise yet in style. Yeah. But like when it came on TV, we really did struggle for a wow. bit in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. You weren't struggling because you didn't understand colors, materials, clothes. You you understood that. Mm. What were you struggling with? I think what we're struggling with mostly is uh, explaining how you're going to package this information <laughs> that you have. Yeah. And you know, be the credible people. Yes. Yeah. It yes. was mostly the technical part when of it. When you go down, she's wearing like wedge. 
heels. Also disturbing. She looks like a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> you have like a thousand colors. So many things yes, going on. So There's many things going denim. on. Denim. And the top looks like nightwear. It was a nightdress that she's like, oh, I can tuck this in and it looks like a top. <laughs> Despite the criticism, yeah. why do you think a lot of people um, loved because there was a gravitation towards you. Yeah. There's almost like an authenticity that people liked towards you. Oh, I appreciate that. Why, why do you think that was? There is always a concept okay. which someone would call a treatment. And in that concept, there's like outfits, that like outfit references. So as a stylist, I always look at those references. It does not have to be the exact, you know, picture in the treatment. But as a creative, you have to think and you're like, how am I going to switch this around? to you know basically work for the artist that I'm you know uh, styling for that specific shoot. <laughs> yeah. yeah I think that and basically just me being authentic and being true to myself. Yeah. I was doing some work a campaign with, mm. and Vinka was on it mm. and Vinka said my stylist will be mm. on set and mm. voila mm. was the stylist and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay, and she seemed to trust you. If you said uh, this big yellow ring goes, yeah. there, it does, you know. And and I, I said, I said, wait, I said, wow, you know, the thing with Tazibon is that what he says goes. Cause mm. Is that you? You you don't let if you're styling Flavia. Mm. Flavia is not going to be the same person telling you beige looks good on me. <laughs> As a stylist, it's very important to actually listen to your client. Yeah. Or what they gravitate towards. Towards, yeah before you actually see how well you can uh, you know the two gwikakati choyagala mm. what you gravitate towards yeah. and the vision that i have for you Kubanga, very many times we have we meet clients yeah. with our ideas and they just do not buy into them mm -hmm. and then it gets you wondering why do you why did you even enlist me in the first place <laughs> if you do not want yeah to something with, i'm bringing you know, if you're not open table, to the yeah. ideas that i'm giving you so it's, I think definitely there has to be a balance. Mm. Everything that my husband says goes very important. Find a way. Can you imagine? <laughs> you have to make it work. Oh, yeah. Have to make it work. We're still in the home of our stars. We have Taziboni. Solomon <laughs> on the show. We'll be right back. Calling all filmmakers. Creating great content requires great collaboration. Introducing the Multi-Choice Talent Factory Portal, a pan-African networking platform that connects directors, producers, scriptwriters, DOPs, sound specialists, editors, actors, and more. Find each other, stay in touch, and create opportunities to keep making great African film. Visit multichoicetalentfactory.com and register today. This month, we're putting the U in Uganda. Watch Nancy find herself as trouble finds her. Experience the trials of marriage through Sanyu and Oscar's eyes. See how souls are sold in the world of prestige. Experience your youth through the little pioneers at play and Anne Kansime invites you into her colorful world. Find your story on Pearl Magic Prime, DSTV Channel 148, Go TV Super Channel 305. Welcome back, it's the home of our stars and we have the stylist, a costume designer, soon to be mm. fantastic, fabulous <laughs> fashion designer. We say these things now, but you know when you're uh, shining, we shall be saying, Kale, the other day, <laughs> we were just here with Solomon talking to us. I, 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 I understand how Sylvia was such a pivotal part in your yeah. career. Now it's a career. Yeah. Uh, you know, guiding you, this, this, this kind of works, this kind of doesn't. Uh, but now it's, it's, it's a job. <laughs> you know, you actually make money off it. How do you rate a role that isn't that popular so you don't necessarily have 16 other people doing it and you already know how we all charge in the industry? Mm. How do you choose that this is, you know, how I'm going to rate myself? Think about creatives. Between uh, Ugandan creatives, mm -hmm. between Abumu, we're not united. Yeah, yeah. Because if that was the case, then it would be very easy to actually deliberate on like an, a standard price. What's our worth? Mm. We're in a very um, 
saturated market. There's mm. so many service providers and everyone is competing. It's mm. like everyone is aiming for the top to the point that some people are willing to even compromise when it comes to pricing. Yeah. Oyenzo kuba potential client. Na je wo na gamba chaya gala no mu billinga. Then again the wo mla la mla na gamba me I can do it. I can do it for less. I can do it cheaper. So and you know also Ugandans in a way you know to agala nyo we we like to bargain. To agala la isi. Ne wote ina bargaining gira. <laughs> so I, I did struggle with that for mm. a while. I had uh, a bunch of clients that always came in, got quotations, and I never heard from them. Mm. And it still actually does happen. Oh. But I think with time and, uh, you know, the time I've spent, the work that I've put out, it's like I've built a certain sort of, uh, how do I call it? Uh, credibility for mm. myself in that omuntu waje wanga ba manyicha ya gala in that mm. ne pricing era ne more pricing era ba they like of course something I, expected, they can work with, I expected them to charge yeah. x and amount I, of I, money I, I never really i never compromise really yeah at is sagala being two years I didn't say that I go and stuff like that <laughs> come on because if that's the case then I'd rather, I'd rather do it for free yeah. completely because what happens is then they'll go around and go, you know this, I probably got this suit from Solo. Yes. At 150 bob. Mm. Can you imagine? Now, those are the clients you're going to attract. Yeah. Because you can't it's charge the, me more than you, you charge the other guy. guy. Yes. Mm. Where is it? Where is it? That's what I can do. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. 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 My pricing has always been standard, irrespective of whether the client is a celebrity mm, or not. Over I thought for stars, you're like, mm, I'm not saying it. Uh, you would be shocked, actually. Yeah? I make more money off of uh, ordinary people, ordinary that, people no and celebrities. No way. Yeah. exposure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but you all know that story. Yes. Yeah, I'll post exposure, you. Exposure, I'll post, yeah, I'll tag you. I'll tell you. At the end of the day, exposure is not going to put food on my table. Yeah. Wow. So I, I just don't buy into that narrative anymore. Wow. Yeah. But you've not done work for musician, star, whoever, where you're like, I, I don't care if I'm not getting paid. I want to style this person. Um, or be on this project. It's never happened? Those are usually like our collaborative projects that uh, we do as uh, creatives. Okay. We, we could probably, time and time again, we've always come together. Uh, uh, I have a friend that I work with, mm -hmm. a makeup artist. Yeah. Um, I have a props guy. Mm. And there's a team of creatives. So yeah. from time to time, when we want to put out collaborative projects that, you know, is it Zikola to put our work out there? Yes. Put our names in. Yeah. You know, like branding there. yourselves yeah. more. So, okay. okay. So most times, if we're enlisting, if we're working with celebrities, it's completely free. So we think a stylist job is easy. I mean, yeah. I tell you, I want to have a photo shoot for my birthday, and you just go through all the boutiques, just get an outfit and put mm. it on me. Mm. We get it wrong, don't we? Yeah, most times. <laughs> <laughs> what does it, what, when we say styling, what do you mean? Because do you have a warehouse of clothes that you just, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and stuff? Or do you have partnerships where you just say, mm. you know, I work with this particular boutiques mm. or this, how does it work? So you see, ideally, um, like being a stylist in practice uh, entails you having like connections to a lot of like fashion designers, mm. a lot of boutique owners, yes. a lot of collectors. But in this Uganda... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I thought you were describing Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ideal picture. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, industry tend not to cut to that right. point yeah. and it's one of the things that has actually uh, forced me onto a journey of actually wanting to be a fashion designer mm. because they mean to be in cause of your now i make them myself whoa so i'm like what's the point <laughs> <laughs> be a designer <laughs> you point? already are being one yeah yeah like all the clothes that i actually use at shoots and stuff what i have them made so it's as good as yeah <laughs> oh my word wait so that means you can't take a rush job i can't say tomorrow 
we go. I need you to style me. Well, it really depends on the concept. Okay. Concept is uh, dictating uh, how uh, whether I can execute yeah. at short notice or not. Or not. Yeah. Oh, and would you be honest with a client and say, money looks good, but I can't deliver? You know, it's very hectic. It's a very very hectic job. Yeah. And I would rather, like, you know, work on a few projects and perfect them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, spread myself thin. Mm -hmm. We are doing everything just because I want clout. Yeah. So there's the person who wakes up every day and, and it's clean. You mm. know, they, they just, everything is prim and proper, mm. you know. Mm. And then there's one who you're just like, Okay, I didn't see how that would have paired, but that, you know, it's just yeah. a thing. So okay. which should we be? You know, somebody's watching and going like, all this pressure, what am I supposed to aim for? I think the, the ultimate goal is to be stylish. Stylish. Because there's a lot of fashionable people who are not stylish. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> what is stylish? All the colors are blending and uh, yeah, shoe is matching. Yeah, I think, let me give a very basic example. Yes. Um, Say um, I have a friend mm -hmm. who has access to Aina Centers, whatever the costing, you know, yeah. but like how they put these things together, together is completely... It's like decor, you know, yeah. the, the house is full of it, like, okay. Yeah, and they could actually be expensive pieces. Yes. But at the end of the day, how they put them together, and you know, it's also very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know that it's it's important yeah. for someone <laughs> to have like a like a signature sense of style. Right. They always That's, stand up like this. Yes. Who's trying to be you? They'll be like, no, this one is. You're cool dressing people. like so and so. Which take yes. Yeah. So yes. I feel like style is more personal. Is is what you do with fashion. Mm. And it's not something expensive. It's, it's, it's completely not. It's how and you that's, that's where most people get it from. Yes. Well. Yeah. They'll buy expensive clothes to look stylish when you're really not. Yeah, wow. So you are in film now. Well, you're a costume <laughs> designer. <laughs> you know, on sets. Mm. Um, you said you started that during COVID? Yeah, uh, 2020. Yeah. 2020. At the time, um, I left TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably February mm -hmm. of uh, 2020. Oh wow, right before lockdown. Right before lockdown. Yeah. And as I was trying to, because at the time, um, you know, I was struggling. Mm. Yeah. So I was just trying to put more energy into my craft and see where right. it would take me and then COVID happened. <laughs> so it's like, it, be home. Yeah, yeah, when it happened, <laughs> I'm like, oh, what was that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So at the time, um, I happened to be really good friends with uh, Nana, Nana Kaga. Kaga, yeah. She reached out and she told me there was um, a, a project her and a colleague were working on. Mm -hmm. And so I asked what, what it was and she said, uh, we're trying to shoot a pilot mm -hmm. for like a TV, a TV series. A series, yeah. And uh, you know, since it's a pilot, mm. you know, been to send what we sent it was to book. Yeah, to get so we're trying to twag and open enough to love it again. I china vam. Then I'm like, the first thing I asked is that, uh, is the Kati, what is the financial gain mm. in all this? Because it was you know, very tricky times, yeah. even like. Whoop transportation in it's itself. It's a hustle, yeah. So I'm like, uh, how, how is it going to happen? So she broke it down for me and she's like, you know, I, it's, it's just, honestly, it's just it's, it's a sacrifice from right. everyone involved. So I think it's that it's this very one time that I took a chance on something yeah. that I was not really sure about. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't even typically probably accept to do. No, I wouldn't. Mm. But I did. And I think maybe lockdown was one of the, the, the bigger driving forces behind my yeah. decision. But I did, and I'm glad um, it was picked, uh, it, was, it was taken on. And it was? Yeah, ever since then, I never looked back. But so you had never worked on a set before? I had never worked on in film, at completely. Zero. I had zero experience. This is different from when you're styling someone going for a shoot and uh, any challenges? It's different <laughs> because there's there's things we had to learn on the job mm. and we never had anyone to actually train us. Brief you and say this Quality is... No way you did is that. Mm. So much as it's like we were like... Because the very first episode uh, of season one was, uh, was a party. Yes. 
and uh, it was pretty much one episode. So right after that, they were, of course, with, as, as, the, as the shoot days kept advancing, we messed up a lot. We realized there was things like continuity that we completely yes. had no idea yes. about. <laughs> yes. There were so many blunders, so many reshoots. Dresses changed, <laughs> necklaces changed, <laughs> earrings <laughs> changed. But then we learned along the way. Yeah. We learned along the way. And it's, it's one thing I really, really like, you know, appreciate. Who do you think, oh my God, this person is making so many strides. I would kind of like to emulate their path or kind of see things the way they see it since it's a creative space. Um, uh, Here or not? To be honest, mm. there's uh, really no one I'd like to emulate. Yeah. Because I feel like my inspirations and my vision and where I want to be as a creative mm. is a very <laughs> difficult it's very complicated. <laughs> Even for you. But there are people <laughs> that you know that keep pushing the boundaries yeah. and people that yes. inspire me mm. to do better, to be a better version right. of creative. Not to be like them. But their work ethic or how they do things or their yeah, art definitely. Yes, pushes you to. I like yeah. that. I yeah. like the way you see that. For, for, for us to make fashion statements, eh? we've yeah. walked out, we've dressed well, especially now, you know, Ugandans like the whole showing up at awards and mm. looking nice and where well, we think we are looking nice. Mm. The do's and the don'ts. I mean, I'm not going to let you get off the show without doing that. You know, that's your old job when you used to tell us the do's and don'ts. Absolutely say this is a fashion mm. mistake and absolutely do this mm -hmm. um i think um as, as you know I've, I've grown as a creative okay and for me right now i'm uh, in a mental space where i'm really like i, I really appreciate open-mindedness nice so i wouldn't say but this is a don't I believe honestly, if you're true to yourself, mm -hmm. and that's, you're comfortable. that's what matters. Wow. You, you, you comes first. Well, I, I'm happy we got to do this interview with the growth. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon, it's been <laughs> awesome. Thank you for having the time for us. It's been a pleasure. You are a star. <laughs> that's it for Home of Our Stars. He is stylist extraordinaire on Prestige, which shows every Monday to Friday, 8.30 p.m. on Pearl Magic Prime. It's the home of our stars, and you can catch my star, Solomon Tezibone, his stylist to the actors and actresses on Prestige. It shows every Monday to Friday, 8.30 p.m. on Pearl Magic Prime. Now, let me tell you about the Multi-Choice Talent Factory. Now, this is a shared initiative, right? So, it brings out creatives to share, to engage, to learn, to grow their talents as best as they can. So, the Multi-Choice Talent Factory is in a three-layered approach, right? So, there's the MTF portal, the MTF Academies and the MTF Industry Masterclasses. Join us today.